Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. For today's midweek meta deck slot, we are playing Testacular's Cradle Control deck. So this is a deck that runs relatively fairly and is pretty much as close to mono green as you can get in the main deck in Legacy these days. So let's take a look at it. So essentially this deck is a Green Sun Zenith plus Natural Order deck. So we have Green Sun Zenith to help find out the right pieces as we're going along getting a few nice silver bullets here and there. And when we have lots of mana through things like Gaia's Cradle, we can then use this to find one of our giant creatures. Or we can just shortcut that and have a natural order where we don't need lots of mana, we just need some green creatures and then we can send those into the natural order and make them into something big like an Atraxa, which is a nice way of drawing some cards, having a nice threat if, we, if we're not going to have lethal from a Kratuth Behemoth, which is usually the go-to one. You get this into play, you win the game. So that's kind of what we're trying to do here. So to power these things out, we've got a load of Hierarchs, both noble and ignoble in nature. We've got four Elvish Reclaimer, which is just incredible in the format right now. It's just uh, such a useful card to have right now, and this deck utilizes it well. I think we should probably look at the land package now that goes with it. So we've got a couple of Dryad Arbors. We've got the Paducah Bog. And mainly we're just getting Cradles, but now we also have the power of getting some Surveils off with these Underground Mortuaries. So we've got a little bit of extra juice that we can squeeze from a Reclaimer that way. But mainly this is going to be getting us Cradle, but the fact that it can get the Bajooka Bog is really strong. We're not like a full package. Once upon a time these decks were running Wastelands, and that's kind of a thing of the past now. It's just not really their game plan anymore. Speaking of once upon a time, we do have three of these. This is just a nice little way of greasing the wheels early on, so we can try and find you know the best one drops we can to sort of set us up nicely. But then in the mid to late game, we can just use these as sort of a bad, well, it's not even a bad impulse, it's a, it's, a, it's a fine impulse for our deck, right? So we can do that. It doesn't find Natural Order or Green Sun Zenith, but it finds the rest of the stuff in our deck, really. Fiend Artisan is, again, another way that we can tutor up some scary things. So we can use this to get some, like, Graveyard Hate or something off an Endurance, or we can use it to go and find, you know, Reclaimers or some Hierarchs and get things going. All the while, we'll be making this bigger each time when we're second creatures. We also have Dried Arbors, which you can fetch up and then sacrifice to the Fiendite Zan, which is pretty cool. And then we use this to pull out something important. Usually, one of the first things that people do against me when they're playing Cradle Control is pull out Grist and just start churning out a bunch of creatures. This gives you a free creature every turn, which then gives you a free whatever you want every turn. It's just a very powerful thing to be doing, as well as getting removal in our deck, which is pretty removal light. But it can also tutor for some things. So it can tutor for you know any of our creatures if we've got the mana for them. So Allosaurus Shepherd is another one that can be found with Green Sun Zenith, uh, as is Collector Roof, which just shuts down a bunch of decks. But Mesmeric Fiend is one that can only be found by a Fiend Artisan. So when this enters the battlefield, Tiger Opponent reveals their hand. You choose an online card from an exile that card. When it leaves the battlefield, they get the card back. So this is like an old school discard creature. So this is just a nice little bit of extra stuff we can have against combos. We can go and find that one off of our Fiend Artisan. And yeah, that's pretty much the main deck here. Uh, this particular build has got four Endurance, which is quite a lot, but given the format at the moment and how prevalent the scam decks are, makes a lot of sense to me. Sideboard-wise, that's where we start to leverage our mana base, where we have our Bayou in it, and these Underground Mortuaries. We don't even have a Swamp in our mana base either, but from the sideboard, we can leverage things like Thoughtseize and Snuff Out. So we've got some removal because we haven't got any in the main deck. We've got some Hand Disruption for some of the combo decks, because we are playing somewhat fair, and we're going to be slower than some of the combo decks, so we need tools to beat those. We've got some Force of Despair to mess up some goblins and stuff. A little bit more Graveyard Hate and Fairy Macabre. The reason for Fairy Macabre here is that you can fetch it off of the Once Upon a Time. So Once Upon a Time can hit any of our Endurances, our Elvish Reclaim, which can then find the Paducah Bog, it can find the Paducah Bog itself, or it can find a Fairy Macabre. There's a lot of Graveyard options. And speaking of Graveyard options, we also have this spicy one, Soulless Jailer. Permanent cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield. Players can't cast non-creature spells from graveyards or exile. So this is just another piece of graveyard hate that we can find up. So we've got a lot of graveyard hate is what we're saying. And guess what? There's still more. Cannot take Scarab Swarm. This is more for like the fair graveyard decks. Things like Delver and stuff like that. And getting a load of 1-1s and stopping them from having their Dragon's Rage Channeler alive. Or having the... I say live. Um, not alive. And it could also stop Merktad Regents from coming into play. This card is pretty good. It's not going to be very effective against the really, really lightning fast graveyard decks like Dredge and stuff like that because 4 mana is too much. But it is a thing that we can reach for in the fairer matchup. 
And then the last card on our sideboard is Pick a Poison. We've got a couple of copies of this. Helps us blow up some creatures if they're flying. Things like Marit Lage, for example. Although the Cradle Control matchup against the Marit Lage decks uh, is very poor. From my experience playing lots of Dark Depths decks. Um, but then, you know, Sacrifice an Artifact, Sacrifice Enchantment. There's definitely some uses for this. Like taking out a Crucial Beanstalk early on. Or a Leyline Binding and getting something cool back. So there's definitely some options with that one. Alright. Quite a lot to look through from this one because there's so many different plays you can do. It does look, you know, relatively simple when it's laid out like this, but when you're actually playing it, there's so many different options and tutoring and stuff that really uh, reward you for getting the reps in. And I'm not someone who's got the reps in with this deck, but I've played it a couple of times and it is a pretty fun and interesting deck. So hopefully we can showcase that today. All right, so this is Testaculars Legacy Challenge winning Cradle Control deck. Remember to like and subscribe and let's play some Legacy. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? All right, our opening hand, we don't really want to have an Atraxa in it for the most part. So I don't think this is a particularly exciting one. I think we're gonna mulligan this one. We're looking for like Green Sun Zenith and stuff like that. All right, this hand is way better. So I'll keep this one. I think I'm gonna throw back a forest here. Like Cradle is just really useful to have. We've got a basic to start off on and a Mana Dork anyway. All right, uh, there's a Saga from our opponent. And Mishra's Bauble. So we could be looking at Saga Storm. We could be looking at 8 cast. Ox Opal. Still don't have any more information just yet. Could be either of those still. Okay. If they're leaving these in play, that suggests to me they're more likely trying to put something like a an 8 cast hand together where they want the affinity a lot more than cracking these walls or redraws. Okay, so I would like to play out this forest, I think. So our opponent might be using their graveyard for things like Emery, but we can just hard cast this. We've already got the Cradle, so we need to play the Reclaimer out now. I think we're just going to be playing out a Noble Hierarch. We can hold up Endurance if we need to pitch cast it, which I don't think we're going to need to in this game. And we can just play that as a pretty reasonable creature if they play something like an Emery and start trying to use their graveyard as a resource. We can just get rid of those cards, but obviously our opponent's got some baubles and they're unlikely to crack them all if they haven't cracked them so far. Or they could have cracked them in our turn, just so they get the draw without being able to be discarded from whatever they have. All right, Spire of Industry. This feels like it might be the Painter deck that splashes red for Pyroblast out the sideboard and a couple of other things. All right, we have an Endurance. So I think we play this Noble Hierarch. That's basically three. We play this Elvish Reclaimer. And then we can either be playing an Endurance or we can Green Sun Zenith for a Fiend Artisan. What is this from our opponents? Just making a token. We don't have anything that's going to be super amazing against this. Although we do have um, the Collector Reef, which is actually going to be way better to get here than a Fiend Artisan. But we don't have any of the, like, destroy artifact things. Uh, Outland Liberator is the one that you would sometimes see. Okay, this feels like a Metallic Rebuke. Okay, so the reason our opponent's doing this is so that we can't get ourselves a... Um, three, that we can't get the mana off of the Cradle that we need to get a Collector Roof here. So we could pitch this and then with this on the stack go and get Collector Roof. That seems reasonable. So the whole priority... We'll do this. This comes into play. Target our opponent. Tap this for three mana. Cast this where X is two. Go and get our collector roof. So we do still have to beat this construct token. But we've got a couple of, com uh, couple of chump blocks down the line. And we've also got, you know, a bunch of creatures in our deck. And tutors and all sorts. So something like... Um, a Green Sun Zenith can go and get us a Grist, which is going to be pretty solid here. Our opponent doesn't get to make another Construct because of the Collector Roof. So they're just floating mana. They can go and get themselves a Shadow Spear, so if they remove the Collector Roof, they can be beating us quite handily in the old sort of mid-rangey beats section of the game. Yeah, so that's what they've gone for. They're unlikely to have much in the way of removal outside of... I guess they could have uh, Hydroblast if they're the Painter build, but they'd have to get the Painter into play first. They could also have, right, Chance of the Way for one. They could have Ottawara to bounce our Collector for a turn cycle. 
which would be enough to then get the Shadow Spear equipped and things. All right, so we're going to take a hit for six. It's not quite a third of our life total, so that's okay. All right, we are living off the top a little bit here. But we knew that when we made that play. But we do get to shut off a lot of our opponent's deck. And we are crunching for four. Sure, it's not six, but it's reasonable. And then when the time comes, the Noble Hierarchs can certainly go under the bus. All right, our opponent has got a bunch of artifacts now. I think we're still going to take seven, and then we'll be chump blocking next turn. All right, let's have a look what we draw. An Elvish Reclaim that we can't cast because of the Chalice of the Void. Well, we can cast it. It'll just go straight into the graveyard when it gets countered. All right, we'll bash for four, and then we're going to lose one of our Hierarchs this turn, which kind of costs us two mana. One from itself, and then one from the Cradle. It doesn't take much for us to blow this open. Like a Natural Order, or a Green Sun Zenith, that sort of jazz, and we should be doing fine. All right, Noble Hierarch. Make the Noble Sacrifice. It's a greater good there. In you go. So now we only attack for three with our Collector Roof. A Wooded Foothills. Okay, this gets Dryad Arbor, so that gets us surviving for a bit longer. Attack for three here. I think having a Dryad Arbor rather than a Noble Hierarch to throw under the bus is a good thing. So that's what we're going to be getting. We could also get the Surveil Land here. And then lose our Noble Hierarch. But I think we're better off just getting a Noble... Uh, Dried Arbor here anyway. Let's crack this. Get one of these Dried Arbors. Go to blocks. Under the bus you go. And we can continue our pecs for three. Any of our tutors. Okay, a Green Sun Zenith. So we have two, three, four, five mana. How big will our Free Nights be? One, two, three, four, five. So it won't quite be big enough five here so we can go and get grist that seems pretty good here so this is two mana three mana four mana gets us a grist and then we can just start but like we can remove this if we want to or we can just start making chump blocks and our opponent is going to be in an awkward situation obviously they might have a force of will here or this could be a metallic rebuke we can't really do much about that all right, so there is a Metallic Rebuke. I guess we're going to bash for three here. Okay, so this Cradle is just going to be tapping for one mana after this turn. One, two, three, four. That'll be five creatures. So our Fiend Artisan won't quite be big enough to beat this Construct. We can play this. Okay, so we can't play either of those. So now we have to chump block with the Collector Reef, which is obviously going to be a disaster because that just unlocks all our opponent's things. And I think we've been beaten here. Just by the fact that we don't have any removal on our deck apart from this Grist that we couldn't find and our opponents just made a massive creature on turn 2. Alright, so they're playing this out into their own Chalice of the Void. Interesting. That might just be a mistake. Now, unfortunately, Collector Roof goes under the bus. Our opponent's entire deck is unlocked now and we should lose this game next turn. Yep, so they get to draw a bunch of cards. They can equip a Shadow Spear next turn as well. So we're going to need something big. Uh, okay, this is a little bit late, unfortunately. So you can play this, and then this and this. But how much? So this is going to be 8. So we soak up 4. Oh, we can't even soak up 4. We've only got 2 lands. So we soak up 1, 2, 3, 4. So we take 3. So we're not technically dead. Let's play this. And I saw a Shepherd that can't be countered. And you can play this Noble Hierarch that also can't be countered because of our Shepherd. And you can play this Reclaimer, which is going to be slightly too small to be big. Which is a weird way of saying that sentence, but you know what I mean. We need one more land for this to give us the extra toughness we require. So now we can soak up four points of damage, and our opponent on board can attack us for eight. So we can soak up three of that and be left with a creature still. A right, cycling baubles. So that's going to reduce the size of their construct. But they have a lot of baubles and stuff in their deck. So they can draw into more. They can draw into lotus petals. All right. So they're playing a mox. That doesn't change the size of their construct. Because they have to get rid of one of them. Patchwork automaton. That's pretty good. 
So now they can also equip. So then I have an 8-8. Eight, eight. So the size hasn't changed there because they sacrificed a ball for the last turn. But they might be playing the patchwork out to then play a bunch of other artifacts. Right. They're covering the Shadow Spear. That gives them an 8-8 eight, eight Trampler. So we need to block... Okay, so now it's going to be a 9-9 nine, nine Trampler. So we can block 4 of that damage and that puts us to one life after this attack. How are we going to win from one life here? Uh, I don't think that's possible. I think we can just call that one a day there. Yeah, it didn't quite come together. Even though we had the nice hate piece, we just couldn't beat their little guy because we don't really have the removal and stuff to do that. Okay. So, this is a matchup where the snuff outs were probably looking reasonable. Uh, how much do we need things like... So, obviously, we want the Allosaurus Shepherd here. I don't think we want something like a Mesmeric Fiend. That's not really what we're about. Some snuff outs. I kind of like just trimming or getting rid of the once upon a time, especially when we're bringing in a thing we want to find that isn't a creature or land. So Endurance is just a fine creature in this situation because it can like shred a bunch of their things. Now we could play something like a Pick Your Poison. We're not ever going to be able to hit the artifact we want because they're going to have a bunch of them, but we can sometimes hit the enchantment we want. So we can bring this in purely as a piece of hate against uh, the Saga. Which I think is probably worth doing because that's like one of the scariest cards for us to play against. Uh, so what are we supposed to take out for it? I think Natural Order is an awkward one in the face of like a bunch of counter spells. So maybe we're supposed to drop a Natural Order. But also the Endurance isn't really what we're about. It's nice to have but it's not like a giant deal here. Then we can trim an Endurance and maybe we'll trim one Natural Order. Because you don't want to just run this into counter spells. That gives us a couple of Pick Your Poison. Which is, again, going to be more about killing their Urza Saga than anything else. So what does our hand do? We can play a turn one Hierarch, or we can play a turn one Reclaimer. Interesting. Uh, I think I'll keep this. I'm probably going to play out the Hierarch, but we're going to lead on a Bayou. So we've got an answer for like the first Emery or a Painter, if they don't name Black, that sort of jazz. So the one reason to play the painter, uh, the sorry, the reclaimer first is so that we can then turn a land into a surveil land and get a little bit deeper into our deck. But I think we can do that on turn three instead of turn two. So I'm just going to run out this Mr. Rainforest and go and get ourselves a Bayou. So that turns on our snuff out. Just play a good little noble hierarch. So now we have an answer for something. So we can answer like Apaches next turn. It'll cost us some mana, but mana's not really going to be the big bottleneck considering what we've got going on here. Right, two mana up each two. This feels like Apaches. There it is. Alrighty. I assume they're going to follow up with a bunch of artifacts. Yep, there's an artifact. So we're just going to hold this Pick Your Poison and just use it as a wasteland for the future, basically. Um, they're not playing any more artifacts out, so they might have a... So, so it could be something like another Patchwork. But I guess you just hold the, the Mox Opal because this doesn't actually tap for mana. So maybe they didn't have anything else here. All right. So it's going to play out this Hierarch. And then we play out this Elvish Reclaimer. So then our Cradle taps for three, which is enough to pay for the patchwork cost when we're going to be doing some snuffing out. So then we cast Snuff Out on this. Pay the ward. And just get rid of this. And we could take out our opponent's Mox Opal here. But again, I think it is more important to take out their Urza Saga. That's the thing that scares me way more. Because that just pumps out a whole bunch of dudes. Right, see to the Synod. As you saw in game one, we are pretty cold to just some big Saga tokens. Like, if we if we can't do our like natural order thing and go over the top of it, then it's going to be bigger than our creatures. So we can... Do some surveilling next turn. We've got two surveils available to us. One off the Windswept Heath and one off of the Elvish Reclaimer. Pithing Needle. Okay, so that's going to name the Elvish Reclaimer, I would imagine. That's also going to turn on their Mox Opal. That does not work the way they want it to. So Pithing Needle specifically states that it doesn't do mana abilities, so our Cradle is still online. Right, they're going to dismember our guy. But they might know that it doesn't work, but they might just be doing it to see if we know that it doesn't work. Um, I've certainly been in situations myself that are that bad where I've had to 
do like uh, a pith needle on something where it doesn't work, like a lion's eye diamond, and just hope that our opponent doesn't know how the game works. So that might be what our opponent's doing. Considering what their hand has shown us, that might well be the case, because their hand doesn't do anything. Right, and endurance, that's a reasonable card to have. We're not just going to fire off this picture poison. Like one of the things our opponent can draw here is a as a, as a saga. So let's just get our attack in for two. And then we can go and put Dried Arbor into play and also an Endurance. But we'll wait on the Endurance in case our opponent plays something like an Emery. We might as well sweep up the cards that they put in the graveyard and make it worse. A Misha's Ball. Well, that's not really the one. Okay, so I think I would like to put this Endurance in. It's just a lot beefier of a clock. So this is a two-turn clock with the Hyrax. We don't actually need to go and get the Dried Arbor here. So we can go and get this Surveil Land and try and get a little bit deeper. I would like to bounce our Hierarch. Tap for two, tap the Hierarch for one. Cast this. Right, we'll put those cards back into their deck so they don't have like Eater Spellbomb to recur with an Emery. So that goes away. In the end step, we will go and fetch our Underground Mortuary. Uh, do we want this? It doesn't change the clock, so I think we'll just put this into our graveyard. Fiend Arzan is not a bad one. So they could metallic rebuke here right. so let's attack for five with our endurance and then i think we'll just play out this fiend artisan as well just so we've got a little bit of extra power going on in case we lose our endurance or something and this can find us some nice things so we can pay for a metallic rebuke here because we've got loads of mana so what our deck does is produce a lot of mana imagine if a couple of turns ago our opponent just dropped a and as a Saka. And we'd have wasted this pick of poison on their Mox Opal. We would have been able to use this to deal with a thing that could potentially get them out of here. Because they would have had like, what, one, two, three, four, five. First one would be five, five. Then it immediately grows to like seven. So, yep. That fell right. Our opponent's hand did not look like a keeper to me though. Are we going to keep the same configuration here? I think it looks pretty reasonable. I don't think we want like Soulless Jailer or Canoptex Scarab Swarm here. I like the Endurance because it has power and that's kind of a big deal for us. We can battle with uh, Thought Monitors if our opponent has them. Unlikely they have them in their current builds, but it's possible. All right, so we're going to jam again. Okay, Elvish Reclaimer into some other stuff. We've got some Green Sun Zenith to be working with as well. We could Green Sun Zenith for a Dried Arbor on turn one to accelerate a lot for turn two. Or we could save the Green Sun Zenith so we have multiple bites at the cherry that is turn two collector. Or we could go get a Dried Arbor. And then we have Dried Arbor, Cradle, or Dried Arbor. Yeah, no, Dried Arbor, Cradle, that taps one. No, that still doesn't get us. We don't have a turn two collector that I can fathom from this hand but if we draw a mana dork then we can because you need three mana for x equals two green sun zenith our opponent's more like into five so something like a green sun zenith could be just like a hard lock on this game if we can resolve it all right what's our opponent going to begin the game with a lotus petal okay so whatever they're playing is probably going to be quite resource intensive here unless they're just going to use this to power out some affinity spells an Emery. Okay. That's pretty good. Two Force of Wills down, Lotus Petal. So they can just sort of activate the Howling Mine here. Uh, but, so if we, if we Green Sun Zenith now, we can go for a turn two Collector Roof. Alternatively, we can play this Reclaimer out and then use this to shut off the Emery the next turn. I think, given our opponent's low resources, I'm going to try for this. So this is the the turn two Collector Roof plan that I said I couldn't fathom, despite it being very obvious in front of us a second ago. But there we go. Okay. So next turn, we have the ability to get the Collector Roof, which stops the Howling Mine aspect of the Emery. And also means that Lotus Petal doesn't do anything. Now, there are some artifacts that can do stuff. Things like Pit and Needle. Or just having artifacts in play for the purposes of Affinity and Metalcraft. So, they're going for the 
Lotus Petal here. And they've got a Mox. All right, so they've, they've assembled some Metal Craft. They can play... Uh, they're paying two life here. This is a Dismember then. All right, so that's going to stop our ability to Green Sun Zenith next turn. Or to stop us Green Sun Zenithing for anything we want. Okay. What is our plan here? Um, I think we're just going to be playing two creatures out. So, cut the Clover. I don't think we're going to fire off a pick of poison. That doesn't seem like a good use of our time and mana here. We're just going to use our Cradle to get this Ignoble Hierarch into play. And the next turn, we can Green Sun Zenith for the Collector Roof. And that's going to be very good against our opponent's current board. But they're going to get a couple of extra cards along the way, which is kind of going to undo the Mulligan. All right, that's a Seat of the Synod. So they've got themselves Meadowcraft a little bit more stably than needing a Bauble. But they're going for another Bauble, get some more card draw, makes sense. Apaches, sure. That is definitely something that can outscale what we're doing for now. Obviously, we can just go big with a natural order at some point. But we can shut off their graveyard. A pithing needle. So this is probably going to name the Elvish Reclaimer here. But that means we don't have to worry about Force of Will next turn or Metallic Rebuke. So we do get the free roll into the Green Sun Zenith. Yeah, they named Guy's Cradle again. That's so weird. I don't understand why they're doing that. Okay, so casting a Noble Hierarch is effectively free here because of the Cradle. So let's play that out. We have the Underground Mortuary if we want it. So this now taps for three, which is the exact mana we need to do this where X equals two. Let's go and get your friend of mine, Collector Oof. So we now have an interesting choice. We can play this Mr. Jane Forest out to turn our Elvish Reclaimer on, which I think is worth doing instead of getting this. And we can also block with the... If this does become bigger... Alternatively, I suppose here, we could attack with the Reclaimer, and if they block... Like, we just have the superior clock, right? So let's just utilise that. Yep, so we maybe get them to block, then we sacrifice our... Mr. Rainforest. All right, I probably just had enough, actually. Okay, so we did get there. I did fathom a way of making the uh, Collector Roof on turn two, but we couldn't do that in the end because of our opponent's disruption. But yeah, I don't think our opponent should have kept their second hand, and the way that they're using this Pithy Needle makes me think that they're quite new to their deck and they don't necessarily know all the interactions in the format. But that's fine, everyone's got to start somewhere. Let's go to round two. All right, so our opening hand for round two is, does our opponent have graveyards shenanigans? If so, then our hand is all right. If not, then we're going to need a little bit of help. We're on the draw, though, so we do get to see some more cards. Um, I think due to the prevalence of graveyard decks in the format right now, I'm going to keep this hand. But I imagine somebody much smarter with this deck would probably tell you otherwise. But I don't know that for sure. All right, so which of our dorks do we play? If we play out the Noble Hierarch... That doesn't actually help us with our colours, but it does kind of confuse our opponent. We don't really care about the colours right now. I think we're going to play out this Noble Hierarch because our opponent might think we have blue spells, and we don't have blue spells, but this could trick them into thinking we are like an Infect deck or something, so maybe they'll play slightly differently. It's a very narrow edge. Like most of our black cards are in the sideboard. Okay, so there is a Plains and a Forest, and no play from our opponent. What does that mean? It could be something like Enchantress. I think I would like to get our two basics here. Do I want to just get another basic or do I want to save this for something a bit better later on? I think I'm going to play this Green Sun Zenith and get the Fiend Artisan up and running. I probably doesn't have Counter Magic. They might have some removal here though. They haven't shown us any Black Mana, so I'm not too worried about Orcish Bowmasters. And we can obviously do the horrible Endurance pitch this play if we need to okay a cabin human okay so it's some sort of green white humans deck we're going to see like banisher priest style creature here or we're going to see something big and scary feels like our opponent's on possibly a bit of a brew here so we're going to get pounded by okay exiling a serious spirit guys pay for this okay i i don't really know what's going on here i'm expecting to get pounded by something i've not seen before 
This could just be like a seasoned engineer type thing. But if they play a seasoned engineer, we can just play a bunch of hierarchs and attack into it and be ahead in the race and steal the monarch off them. Which is kind of interesting. Alright, so it is a creature that gives them the initiative. Okay. Interesting. So I'm imagining that they've got something like Seasoned Engineer in their deck as well. This could just be like a Green Suns deck where they have one of. Also, the white mana could be like a bit misleading too. There might just be more green red base because they've shown us spirit guides. Hard to say. Okay, so if we go Ignoble Hierarch and then we play another Ignoble Hierarch. So this is now going to get plus three when it attacks, so it's going to be a 4-4, four, four, which is bigger than their Undermountain Adventurer. So let's do that. I think that is better here than doing the whole tutoring for something just yet. Maybe I'm wrong on that one, but we can probably kill them next turn because we have a Cradle in hand. All right. Also, an Endurance can block this without dying. Let's take this into our hand. Let's play out this Cradle. So that's four mana from the Cradle. Five, six, seven. Yeah, we can do some pretty gross things next turn if we need to. There's a red source. So what am I worried about here? Like Minsk and Boo is pretty strong. Oh wow, they're just playing something really big. A Morlock where X equals four. Interesting. Morlock's pretty cool. So they're gonna kill our Fiend Artisan. In response, I will make ourselves a little endurance. That's probably not so little. We'd like to keep our creature in the graveyard, so that's why we're doing it now rather than after. We can wait for this to die and shuffle it back in, but we'd rather... Oh no, it exiles actually, doesn't it, with the Morlock, so it doesn't matter either way. Alright, so our F Endurance can attack into this Morlock and win that fight. Because it will be a 6-7. We also have the Forge, if we want to do that. Um, is that worth doing, though? I think that's still better than surveilling here let's just make a large endurance and draw a natural order we did not draw a natural order however we did draw a pretty good card here so i think we just attack with this first and then we'll see if our opponent wants to insert a life title or if we're going to be just gristing something away here all right so let's tap for some mana this taps for some mana. Let's play this Grist out. Let's play this. Get this out as well. I think we turn this into a Dried Arbor and use that to kill their creature. Sacrifice this. And then we have to decide between the Undermountain Adventure and the Morlock. Neither of them have Trample. Okay, our opponent scooped it up. Like, we are very far ahead there. Okay, so we're looking at, like, some kind of... Creature matchup in the Naya colours. Our opponent's deck looks pretty sweet, if I'm being honest. So, I think if we're boarding in Snuff Outs, we want less Once Upon a Times. Which means something along these lines. I don't think we want the Collector Roof either. So this gives us another slot we can add in. Our opponent hasn't shown us anything that Pick of Poison is going to do much to. We could play these Force of Despairs, but we're not great at pitch casting to them. But they are removal spells. We could just play like something like a Scarab Swarm, but again, that doesn't feel great either. Um, the Allosaurus Shepherd, our opponent could quite conceivably be playing a Chalice deck. So maybe we're supposed to board in a Pick of Poison for a Chalice. And then we can, you between having one Pick of Poison and four Green Sun Zenith and an Allosaurus Shepherd, we should be able to play through a Chalice relatively effectively. And maybe some random stuff will get picked up by the Pick of Poison. But this could end up being a dead card. So that's something to consider. I think the endurances are just fine as creatures. We want creatures to mess up combat maths. And being good against Undermountain Adventure in terms of if we've taken the initiative off them is not a bad place to be. Uh, our first sighting of a natural order. That's exciting. So we can play our Reclaimer. We will be trying to find a second land if we keep this hand. 
But we do have two pieces of removal, so I think that's pretty important for how this matchup is going to play out. All right, no chalice on one. That's good. That's the first hurdle escaped. So our opponent could quite conceivably be playing a blood moon, but we have the basic now, so this is very safe. We want to just set ourselves up with a swamp here. Get ourselves our little friend. And pass with two removal spells. All it costs us is eight life, which is, you know, fine. Each of their creatures is probably going to hit us for more than four every time, so it's going to be well worth it to. The fact that this is a, a zero mana kill spell, so it's not going to mess with our tempo, is really important when we're trying to beat through the initiative. Because it's quite a tempo-y approach to Magic the Gathering. Right, so put a touch underneath that, that's important to know. A Caves of Chaos Adventure. Right, that's pretty interesting. Not a surprise. I think our opponent is just playing like Naya Initiative. Um, so when these cards first came out in paper, there was a big tournament in the UK that was won by somebody playing Naya Initiative. Um, and it was pretty cool. It also had the Morlocks and stuff as well. This is before... This was while uh, White Plume Adventure was legal and nobody had really cottoned onto it because it had only just come out. Alright. So let's attack with our Reclaimer here. Get that initiative. Get that sweet card advantage. Give me our other Basic Forest, please. Play Basic Forest. So we have a choice here between the Fiend Artisan or the Ignoble Hierarch. I think we just play the Fiend Artisan here. So we've got two creatures, and we've got their next creature answered as well. So I'm quite happy with the spot we're in. Minsk and Boo could be uh, an awkward one, potentially. Underbound and Adventurous. They're going to go into the Forge or the Lost Well here. And they're going to be very sad that we're holding another removal spell. All right, they're going to the Lost Well, which suggests that their hand isn't the most exciting. So let, what's the exact text on Touch the Spirit Realm? Uh... Uh, beginning of the next end step. Yeah, so if they blink this out, it still won't be around to block. So we definitely want to attack our opponent. So the question is, how would we like to attack our opponent? So we could go and... If we attack with a Fiend Artisan, then we can natural the next turn. And that feels the best. Okay, we've missed a point of damage here, actually. I'm supposed to play this this high rack up first. Yeah, that's my bad. We don't actually care about the... Let's just put our cards on the, the guy. We don't care about scrying because our hand is already really good. So we want to play out this Hierarch like we should have done pre-combat. Mr. Point Damage. And then we can turn this into a Cradle. And then we can just natural order up a Cradle Hoof next turn by sacrificing our Dried Arbor. Uh, each player card... Okay, we have that beat. And what creature type is this? A giant, okay. So this is going to come in tapped, but then it'll untap in our turn. The dried eye will come in tapped, but we don't care that, about that. And it's not a spell either. Um, I guess we trap our opponent. Just makes the calculations. Like, we, we have way, way more damage than we need here. Our creature will be coming in untapped, uh, will be coming in tapped because of the Ark of Amira, but that's fine. Right, so let's cast this. These creatures should be sufficient. We just hoof our opponent into the oblivion. Got some nice triggers. Oh wait, no, creatures don't come in tap, do they? Okay, so we get to attack the crave as well. That's a lot of damages. All right. Yeah, so the um, our hand was just obviously excellent here. A one dot creature to steal the initiative and just send it back at our opponent. And then let's just do an attack for 30 or whatever. Yeah, that feels good. Feels like initiative isn't very good at the moment, like the regular red-white build. So I understand why people are trying to play the, the green splash build. And I actually quite like the green splash build. And it is on my list of things to play. I think having Morlock is just a nice, useful extra tool to have access to. Uh, but our hand was very good and it was always going to be difficult for our opponent. There's different ways you can contest the initiative. You can either just stop them ever getting it in the first place. Or you can let them get it, but make sure that they never have creatures around, but you do. Which is what we did, because our deck is full of creatures, so it's really suited to do that. 
Right, 2-0. and oh, Let's go to round three. What does this hand offer us? I don't really like having the Paducah Bog in hand. But it's not an irrelevant card. Um, I think on the draw I'll keep this. Because we have a chance of drawing more lands. We've got two draw steps to find a land. And we'll keep this. Now we have some of the things we're interested in, right? You know, Green Sun Zenith, Reclaimer, Fiend Artisan, Natural Order. We've got a bunch of good cards. We just need a little bit of mana to get over the hump. And we have a Grief coming right in our chops with an Animate Dead. So our opponent is on an aggressive Reanimator build, I would imagine. Although I think um, Rescaminator does play the Animate Dead as well. So they might just be on Rescaminator. But they are not on the uh, just the four Reanimates. So they're going to have Entombs in their deck is what this tells us. Right, they're just going to reanimate straight away. They are. So we're going to lose our Fiend Artisan or our Green Sun Zenith, I would imagine. There's a the Green Sun Zenith. So this Paducah Bog not doing us the world of good right now. Um, it's kind of awkward. Which land to play here? I think we play this and just hope they don't have the days. Because if we play this land out, so if we play our fetch land out, then we don't get this tap land out of the way, so it makes our turn two a lot worse. Whereas if we play this out, we play around a days. It's just we don't know if we're going to drink, be drawing a one drop and want this land or not, and be having a two drop here. So I think we're just going to cast this into a days and hope they don't have the days. They did not have the days. So do I want? I think a hierarch is better at this point. So we'll play this out. Our opponent's deck can have some amount of wastelands in. So I think we're just going to go and get a basic forest here. Play our Hierarch. And then just sort of race to Natural Order and try and get an Atraxa into play. That's usually pretty effective. All right, there is a Troll of Kazadun being cycled. Let's hope they can't immediately reanimate. Okay, they can't, so we can Paducah Bog, and then we're just taking three from the Grief. We should be able to beat this... Um, 3-2 Grief. You know, it's not the scariest clock. Our deck is just absolutely rammed full of creatures. Okay, so let's start off with the Bajuka Bog. Let's strip away their hand, uh, their, their graveyard. So we can take a look at their hand with the Mesmeric Fiend. Or we can play this Fiend Artisan. Fiend Artisan will dodge an Orcish Bowmasters. Interesting. I think Fiend Artisan is better here. This gives us a threat that can attack for 3. So we'll be on 13. Then we can punch our opponent down to 12. And then we are ahead on that race. As well as having this back up natural order. Um, next turn we can play Mesmeric Fiend and Reclaimer. To pave the way for the natural order potentially. So I think we begin with the Mesmeric Fiend here. So we know that we're not attacking our Fiend Artisan into something spooky. Force of Will. Force of Will. Daze. Alright, I will take this Daze I think. Would you like to force of will my Elvish Reclaimer? You would not. Interesting. Okay. Let's bash for some. So this natural order is not really going to do much for us. So we could just double block on the grief. We will lose both of our creatures doing that though. And we just have a superior clock already because we're ahead on board. So I think we're just going to carry on like this. All right. We have perfect information. It's just two force of wills. We have that being. Um, so we could go one, two, three, four, and we could transmute like this mesmeric thing if we wanted to into something a bit spookier, but we just have a winning, winning race here. So let's just keep doing this. And now we can play this Fiend Artisan. All right. They didn't want to counter that. So, uh, we get to keep on bashing. We can use our Reclaimer to go and get a Dryad Arbor. And then we can attack for two, four, five, six. Alternatively, we can get a fetch land. Then in our turn, we can attack for three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it'll be one shy. So our opponents pondered. They found something they want here. Getting uh, getting some Bowmasters vibes. We can take the three here. That's not an issue. Okay, there's the Bowmasters, as I suspected. We ping down our Mesmeric Fiend. We get their days back. Then we will get this Bajuka Bog. 
We find a cradle, or we can go find Dryad Arbor. I think I just want to Dryad Arbor here. Like, we can fiend out that into something spooky. Um, one, two, three, four. Let's just go and get a Grist. Grows our Fiend Artisan. Just plus on our Grist, I think, for now. Uh, we can attack with our... Okay, our opponent's just had enough. And I don't blame them. We sort of validated these counter spells. I'm surprised they didn't fire them off on something we played earlier, like a Fiend Artisan. Like, I understand them wanting to play around the Natural Order. And I've definitely been in that position where I've tried to play around the Natural Order and got beaten by the Fiend Artisan. That's kind of what happened here. All right. So, we're looking at some graveyard-based decks. So, these sorts of things are why they're in the deck. Obviously, our snuff-out is terrible. Do we want thoughts? I don't think we want Force of Despair. That doesn't feel great. Pick your poison. Can kill an Archon or an Atraxa. Is that how we want to try and fight those cards? That is an interesting question. Uh, how do I feel about this Merrick Fiend? Seems pretty bad against Orcish Playmasters, so let's just get rid of that one. Uh, we like the Endurances. Like, I don't think we're fighting around their creatures being in play. If, I cre if their creatures in play, we want to grist them or go over the top. We don't need to collect Roof. That's not for this matchup. Alasaurus Shepherd is for this matchup. Pajukabog is for this matchup. We can probably trim a X, uh, an X1 here and have something like this. Thought Seize is an interesting one. We could bring this in to try and punch a hole. I think the plan here is beat their graveyard plan and then we naturally beat their fair plan because our deck is just really good into that sort of thing. That's how I'm going to approach this one as somebody who's played hardly any of the Cradle Control. So, take my advice with a pinch of salt, but I think I've explained it relatively well there. If they want to play a fair mid-range game, they're not going to beat the Cradle Control deck because that deck thrives in the fair mid-range times. Um, this fetches a Bajuka Bog, but it will be a turn too slow. And then we have a bunch of lands we don't want, so I'm going to send this one back. Okay, we have Graveyard Hate that's uncountable. We've got some decent stuff here. I think I'm going to keep this and probably throw back the Verdant Catacomb. This can get us a Dryad Arbor, though, is the thing. Would I rather have that as opposed to a Cradle, given we've got Fiend Artisans? Yes, I think that's tr that's actually what I would prefer here. So we're probably going to lead off on this underground mortuary. All right, our opponent's on five cards to begin with. And they're beginning with a ponder. So we're not going to get reanimated on turn two because that usually requires... I suppose they could play a troll is the thing they could reanimate because otherwise entomb is a black card and reanimate is a black card. Um, oh, does that change anything? Do I want a green sun zenith? I don't think I want a green sun zenith for... A dried arbor. I think I'd rather use that next turn. Although the only issue here is if we play out this Fiend Artisan, it is possible that this is going to die to a Bowmaster. We do have the Fairy Macabre for that. Alright, I'm going to go with the Underground Mortuary. Ideally, surveil a creature. We did not surveil a creature. Okay, we'll put this into our graveyard. Um, yeah, so our Fiend Artisan will be vulnerable to Orcish Bowmasters unless we pitch our Fairy Macabre. So that's not good. Okay, our opponent's passing with Orcish Bowmaster's Manor up. So let's just uh, not play into that one. So what we could do here is jam ourselves a Green Suns looking for the Elvish Reclaimer. That seems pretty reasonable. That's a card that doesn't die to the Bowmasters. It is incredibly telegraphed in front of us right now. Now, they could counterspell this. They did not. Okay, so I would like an Elvish Reclaimer, please. One of the best creatures in the format right now, to be honest. It dodges Bowmaster stuff. It messes with Graveyard so that your opponent can't do the reanimate shenanigans. It's just a good card. If you saw my Dark Depths video the other day, I've even started running it in Turbo Depths. So it's a pretty big deal. Right, and I see Sewers here. So they attack us with the Orc army. They might have another Bowmasters. Okay, they do not have another Bowmasters or they're really trying to mess with us. Okay... Do I want to play... If they didn't make the bow mark, if they didn't try and attack here to try and attack and get the ping off, it could mean that they're saving this to try and get like something like a Fiend Artisan. Definitely some some wheels within wheels going on this one. Alright, so I'm going to play this Wooded Foothills, I think. And then I think I am going to jam this Fiend Artisan. And then 
<clears throat> I think we're going to get a Bayou here and play the Hierarch. So we can attack with a 2-3. That will trade with the Orc army tokens if that's what our opponent's doing. But I think we can just hold back here. So our opponent might think they're safe to do some like graveyard stuff and then get blown out by our Fairy Macabre because we've kind of got the, the ground gummed up. All right, Brainstorm is the exact sort of card they're looking for here. Also, an interesting thing about the deck we're playing today is that there are no Orcish Bowmasters in it. It's uh, an unusual one in a black deck. I forgot to mention earlier. Alright, so we're just doing some shuffling and brainstorming. Let's see what they find. Dalthy Voidwalker. Sure, that's a pretty good creature. Certainly changes how we have to marshal our resources in terms of sacrificing things. Uh, I've probably got two cards in hand. Interesting. So we've got this guy's cradle. That's not a bad one, is it? So let's... This is three, four, five, six, seven mana. What do we want here? We want to deal with this Void Orc. We don't really have many good ways of doing that. So we can go and get a Grist here. And we can sacrifice this Hierarch. Or do we want to sacrifice the Reclaimer? We can sacrifice the Hierarch. Alright, so we go and get ourselves a Grist here. And then we can plus this. Or we can sacrifice the thing. I think we're better off plussing it this turn. And we'll smash down ourselves a Fiend Artisan. A Force of Will pitching a dress down. Okay. opponent has got no cards in hand. So as long as we can keep our Grist alive for this turn cycle, I think we should be fine. This is why I quite like to have an Orcish Bowmasters in our deck. So this is Grist, this is Grist, this is Grist. We can't block this, but we can block both of these. If they have another guy, they can ping our things down. Alright, let's keep our Grist alive. If we get to keep our Reclaimer as well, that's going to just be aces. A reanimate on the Orcish Bowmasters. Well, well, well. Let's say no to this one. And let's get rid of Ponder as well. Well, that panned out quite well for us. Alright, so this becomes a Dried Arbor. Actually, does it become a Dried Arbor? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we can't do this in a way that's going to actually defeat this this guy right now, which is annoying. Uh, a green sun zenith. That's not the most exciting. So we have one, two, three, four mana. Five, six, seven. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're one mana off of getting our attraction. Okay, I'm probably just scooping it up. So what we probably have to do this turn is just do, like, nothing. Let the Dathed Boy Walker kill our Grist, and then we can just create a Hoof them. Uh, alternatively, this turn we're probably just turning our Dryad Arbor into another Fiend Artisan. Or no, we probably don't want an X1. Uh, maybe we just go and get uh, an Endurance, because that's a nice beefy body. But yeah, this game, like I said, if we're not getting reanimated on with, like, the, the big things like the Archon and the Atraxa... It feels like our deck is just going to smash in all the sort of mid-rangey type stuff that these decks can pull off. All right, we're 3-0 in pretty quick time. Let's go to round four. Not a big fan of the double cradle, but we can certainly leverage it and it'll be good against Wastelands. We can just get a basic here and just play out our Hierarchs. This seems like the sort of hand that you would keep with a cradle control deck. All right, a tropical island. That doesn't tell us too much about what our opponent's up to yet. Let's hope they don't have a stifle. Stifle here and we're probably dead. Have I just spoken to resistance? Unbelievable. <laughs> sure. I don't think we're supposed to just sit there and not play anything when we've got a handful of one drops. But that is a painful one for sure. If we can draw a land here, that'd be nice. We did not draw a land. Let's play a cradle. Yikes. We probably lost this one based off of that one stifle. Alright, I think our opponent's playing the Bant uh, Stifle Nought list. Right, an Uro. It's a pretty good card. Yeah, I think if we had a basic forest, then our hand would have been incredibly strong. But just being exposed to that stifle has really done us a disservice there. Okay, I guess we're just going to ship one of these natural orders. Yeah, we've probably lost this one now. Right, there is another Uro. 
Because if they have the stifle, we don't really have any way to play around it unless we just sit around hoping they never do anything when we only have one land that actually can ever do anything. So I think we do have to jam there. It's just unfortunate the way it's panned out for us. Oh, wow. All right. We do get to catch up a little bit now, though. Let's have a hierarch. This is not worth counter spending, I do. Oh, our opponent disagrees. Okay. I guess we're not doing anything. So I was thinking about getting the Dried Arbor as well, just to make sure we have more mana with the Green Sun Zenith there, because we've got a bunch of good stuff in hand. I guess they're not expecting the days to get much better once the Cradle becomes involved. Right, a Brainstorm. They've already played their lands, so we're not expecting a Wasteland. I'm not sure if our opponent's deck supports any Wastelands. For our sakes, let's hope not. Although we do have the boat backup cradle, but I'd like to kind of get some stuff going. So they're just trying to fill their graveyard and get this Uro into play. All right. Let's play Noble Hierarch. And then we're just going to go get a Dried Arbor here. If they allow us. They could have another Days. But we have to play into it from where we are now. Okay. So next turn we can... Try a natural order, but into our opponent's blue deck with a bunch of cards in hand. That's a little bit sketchy. All right. Goodbye, Hierarch. We lose our Arbor as well. Feels like our opponent's thinking about it. Okay, I decided not to. So these Dreadnought decks usually have Prismatic Ending in. So we can discern from our opponent's hand they don't have a uh, Prismatic Ending. So I think you'd be more inclined to use that on the Hierarch. And then you would plow the Arbor. Because obviously they might not have another land they have, but they could Uro into a land, and then they'd have the mana left over to then Prismatic Ending if they had it in hand. But now we have to beat an Uro. Natural Order is not an unreasonable way of attempting to do that, though. So we, if we can get our Fiend Artisan down, then we can use it to get an Allosaurus Shepherd, and then use that for the Natural Order to be uncounterable. And we just kind of got to take our licks off of our opponent's Uro for a couple of turns. We should be able to... Okay, so there's a Wasteland, so we lose the Cradle or the Dried Arbor. I think the Dried Arbor is the better one to hit here. But our opponent doesn't necessarily know that. Right, they're going for the Cradle. We've got another Cradle, so that actually works out fine for us. We don't have a land drop in hand in, as it stands. Alright, so let's play this Ignoble Hierarch. Place Cradle. Let's play this Noble Hierarch. That's a three. Let's get a Fiend out of hand going. Can't daze it. So next turn we can do a crate hoof, or we can go and get a Traxa. Traxa is not amazing against white, white removal, whereas the the crate hoof not amazing versus stifle. So there's definitely some interesting ones. Although if they stifle anything, they'll probably stifle our fiend as an activation. Doorkeeper thrill. Artifacts and creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Okay. Phyrexian dreadnought. Yep, that's a pretty strong one. So we have to go and get a Grist this turn and kill the Dreadnought. So I will take six here. Not what I want, but it's what's happening. All right, deck. Collector Oof, you are pretty oof. Uh, we could just try and play the Collector Oof. Um, like it's kind of free from what we're trying to do here. And it gives us something better to sacrifice than the other things we've got going on. I don't think our opponent is going to counterspell this. This is just a grizzly bear. We get to sacrifice. We're going to get blown out by Stifle here. So I got the Stifle when we, this game is over. I did not have the Stifle. Right, so we get the Fiend. Uh, the Grist, sorry. Um, we'll minus this. They could Stifle this, but I don't know why you wouldn't just Stifle the Fiend out as an activation if you had a Stifle. Just get rid of this Fraction Dreadnought. That buys us a modicum of time. What is this? Blue, blue. We could uh, slip out the vac or bounce it or something. Right, let's do some surveil action. We do not want this mysterious forest. So they can probably peck away at this. Um, is it worth me attacking our opponent for two damage here? I think it probably isn't. So our opponent definitely had a spell earlier. I was thinking about doing another dreadnought. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of dreadnought action. 
How do we beat that? I can attract her. Has lifelink, so that's something. So this doorkeeper thrall is almost certainly going after our grist, I think. Yep. So do preserve our life total here. We can soak up six now. We can soak up six next turn. I think we're going to soak up six next turn. And hope that we can get an attractor going. Endurance isn't really where we need to be here. This taps are three. This is four. Um, if we turn this into... Okay, so I think we have to go this. X is one to get... So that's two mana. And leaves us with three, four, five. Yeah, okay. So we need to go and get the um, Allosaurus Shepherd, I think, here. To make sure our natural order resolves. But our opponent's got a lot of cards over there. So we've got three mana here. Four mana. Natural order away. This ignoble hierarch. I could obviously just plow our Shepherd and then counter spell this. So all we're doing is getting a big guy. So this can trade with the Frexen Dreadnought and we'll take, what, five off of it? But then we'll be gaining seven. So we gain two on that exchange. Now, if they got the plow here, they're plowing our Shepherd. Okay. Have they got anything that deals with our Retraxa? And we can just scoot this one up. Yes, they do. All right. We got handled by the Stifle there, which is sometimes going to happen, unfortunately. So... They've got a couple of big creatures that will die to pick a poison type stuff. So a doorkeeper thrall, uh, or we can kill the dreadnought. So these feel like good ones to have. Scarab Swarm, this is kind of one of the, the fairer matchups where this is going to be quite handy. I don't think we want this mesmeric fiend. If we bring in all of these, we definitely don't want this collect tree from these uh, once upon a time. And that leaves us with two more cards to trim here. So my instinctive one would be are we getting rid of a natural order i think it's one natural order one hierarch i think that's what goes here we don't want to be playing lots of natural orders into the cat spell deck but they are a nice thing to pivot to sometimes okay um i don't want to keep this handful of lands so let's mulligan that All right this looks like a pretty good hand uh, i think we're probably just going to send this mortuary back for now we can go get one later if we want it. Let's play our Ignoble Hierarch. And then we can get a Fiend Artisan on the go. And hopefully things will be good for us. We can play Fiend Artisan around a daze. And then we can follow up with a Noble Hierarch. And if they want to daze that, then they're going to be very far behind. We're just going to have our creature plowed. All right, it's going to plow our creature. So now we have to decide if we're playing around daze with our Fiend Artisan or not. We're going to get a... I kind of want the Bayou for when we're trying to do our snuff outs. So I think I'm going to get the Bayou here. And I do just want to get this guy up and running. Right, no days there, sure. So next turn we can Noble Hierarch. All right, just to ponder. That's not too scary. It means we're unlikely to be facing some kind of 12-12 this turn unless our opponent's got a random Lotus Petal tucked away in their deck, which I do not believe they do. All right, so there's the wasteland that I didn't really want to see. But we are the player with something on board, at least. All right, I will play this Noble Hierarch. And I will attack for two. So we can either surveil here. If we want to surveil, we want to do it now in case we put a creature in. Do I rather surveil or Dryad Arbor? That is interesting. If we surveil, we don't want to be exposed to wasteland. So I think we don't do that now. Then we wait. Although, maybe we get exposed to a Stifle there. Kind of, uh, a lot of things. They can sort of play around any, so, you know, we can play around any of the things they have there. But we can't play around all of them. So, if our opponent wants to hold open a Stifle though, that means they're not developing their board and that's okay with me. I think we could be looking at a Doorkeeper Thrall. An Arter maybe? Nope, just a Ponder. Okay. So they chose to shuffle their library with that one. Do I play into a Stifle right now? Is that a thing I need to do? I don't... All right, so we have a land here. So let's crack one of these and see what happens. 
Like nothing happened. We can't actually get anything too exciting here because of the way our mana works out. Um, let's put this into the graveyard. Let's attack with his fiend out of I think. So we've got like one forest left to fetch. So I guess we just attack for two here. And then we can hold up an endurance. Or we can go and get the what's it called? The Dried Arbor or the Surveil Lands. That's the one. Underground Mortuary. That's the name I was trying to think of. Even though it's in front of me on a card. There you go. So you got one more of those in the deck. Okay, there's a Wasteland. So we might even be tempted to Endurance ourselves. Although having Endurance to beat the Uro is going to be kind of a big deal. That is a Doorkeeper Thrall. That is interesting. Are we supposed to play an Endurance in response to that? I think so. If they stifle this, they can't be putting a, a Dreadnought into play. So we're going to get our basic forest here. Put this Endurance into play, and then we can go and find a Grist and try and remove that. Natural Order. Maybe we're just supposed to cut all of our Natural Orders in this matchup. But I do just like having the big Oops, I Win button. Let's try and put another creature into play. So we're trying to reduce the cards in their graveyard for the purposes of... An Uro. I think that's worthwhile here. This does feel like a matchup that is pretty awkward for us, though. Like, Doorkeeper Thrall undoes a lot of the sort of things that our deck is actually trying to accomplish. And then, you know, they've just got clean removal. they got some big creatures. Seems like quite a good place for them to be. Right, so there is the Dreadnought. Not a surprise to see you. So, we can kill this. Pick your poison. That's a pretty good way of trying to kill it, isn't it? Um, uh, I would like you to sacrifice an artifact, please. They could force of will this. Which means we take the 12, and then we get the grist the next turn. Force of negation. Alright. Interesting. Okay, so I would like... What would I like here? Do we want... Like, the Endurance keeps the Doorkeeper Thrall at bay. We could just sacrifice this Hierarch into a different Hierarch. Or we could go and get our Allosaurus Shepherd and try that plan. But we need to draw another land to make that happen. So I do think we want just another Hierarch. So we just get an Ignoble Hierarch. I think that's better here. It grows our Fiend Zan in case we're going to need some more uh, booty to put behind a big Frex and Dreadnought attack. If we had something like an Orcish Bowmasters, that would be really good here because we could... Actually, no, it wouldn't be really good here because we wouldn't get the ping, would we? I'm going to say because we'd have two bodies to sacrifice, but that's not how that works under the Doorkeeper. Yeah, Doorkeeper just really ruins us. Yep, that Wasteland is pretty strong here. So we're punished for not going for the Grist line there and just trying to play the Pick of Poison. Yeah, I think that was our mistake more than anything. And now they've got an arrow as well. Yeah, I think we've lost this one. And I think uh, it's on us to a degree. Although, if we got the Grist and killed the Dreadnought, then we lose the Grist. Actually, we don't lose the Grist to the Thrall. But then they get a an Uro. Crate Hoof, that's not going to do anything here. I think we can call this one here. Yeah, I did not play perfectly, but this does feel like a pretty nightmare matchup. I would very much like to be on the other side of this one. Good removal. Lots of nice cantrips. Doorkeeper as well that shuts our deck down while enabling theirs. Their creatures are all bigger than ours for the most part as well. Uh, yeah, Wastelands to take out our Cradles and things. Seems like a pretty good matchup for them. And our winning streak comes to an end. We have one more round to go. Let's see if we can get the 4-1. Alright, this opening hand is not very exciting. I guess we have turn 1, Dried Arbor. Turn 2... Endurance, turn three, natural order. That's probably okay. But it's not really the most joy-inspiring thing, is it? All right, I think I'll keep it just because of the prevalence of graveyard decks. We kept a similar one in a previous round for the same reasons. All right, let's get ourselves a dried up there. Oh, if we're against the blue matchup, though, the natural order could be a bit of a liability, truth be told. Cavern of Souls, okay. Glad we got a creature into play. Goblins. Okay, just an Aethervar. Not too bad. Not too bad. Grist the Hunger Tide. 
Well, well, well. That is better than an endurance hit, that's for sure. Let's just get this boy up and running. All right. So we can have a lot of mana next turn and do a pretty scary natural order if we want to. But we can also just not do those things and just keep mounting up the pressure. And crack the following turn. Battle cry goblin, sure. I don't think we need to kill this. That could be an error on my part thinking like that though. So this gets us another dried arbor and then we just natural order our opponent next turn. I think that's honestly fine. How do we lose Muxus, I guess? But they're a long way from Muxus. So I think the plan here is to cast the Endurance, get the Dried Arbor, and just do the classic natural order for Hoof and just go pretty wild. I think our opponent's hand's going to have to be pretty good to beat us. They certainly have draws that would be pretty scary here. They could go stick a Goblin this turn into Muxus. But these of our builds tend to run less into the sticker goblins and Muxus plan and more into like the, the old school grinding away. What would you like to do, opponents? Okay, we're not getting killed this turn. Because they're already in combat. They're paying some cost for something. Nope, they've decided against it. He's coming at the grist. That's fine by me. That's not the important object right now. It's a good object. So this could be the... Um, all right, they're just pumping it. Okay, that's fine. So let's put it to three, and then they can then play the uh, the guy that pings for two to finish this off. So let's cast this. Like, we could have played this and tried to block the Battlecry Goblin, but we just have a pretty clear... All right, you can have another land in your deck. Uh, a pretty clear route to victory here. Just get Dry Arbor. We don't need to mess around here. Natural Order. Sacrifice his Insect Token. Get big crater hoofs. All of these are going to get very large. Uh, I'm not doing the maths. I assume we win. <laughs> All right. So we even had the mana to then get. We could have got a tractor first if we really wanted to, but not necessary. Okay. So this is a goblins matchup. I would very much like to have these snuff outs available. And I think this is one of the matchups where we do want the force of vigors just in case there is some muxus shenanigans. Pick your poison can take out our opponent's ether vial. Is that worth doing is another question though. So I don't think what Mesmeric Fiend or Once Upon a Times. Endurances are creatures that are reasonable. But not impressive. Um, we don't really need the Shepherd. Our opponent's on the Aether Vial build so they're unlikely to have any of the sort of Chalice stuff. Uh, there's another Once Upon a Time that can go. We could keep the Collector Roof. Just as a thing that can mess with their Aether Vial sometimes. That seems reasonable. And we just trim an Endurance. And call it a day there. Right, Thought Seize to take out a Muxus from our opponent's hand is somewhat tempting. But Endurance is just bigger than their guys. If we get into like a mid rangey fight, we can kill all their 2-2s two or their 3-3s three if they've got a Lord in play. And we can just kind of stabilize a board just with a 3-4 flash body. That is quite often going to be a removal spell when we play it. Uh, double removal spell is exactly the sort of thing we're after. Let's keep this one. Now our opponent's probably going to have things like pyrokinesis in their deck now possibly fury if they're that way inclined i think pyrokinesis normally is what people go for these days all right let's go and get ourselves i think we just want a forest for this one and then we start working on the um the the bayous well we got a bayou and 200 gram mortuaries in our deck we own them wastelanded we want to make sure we play one then we have snuff out available we don't necessarily need to snuff out for the first turn. Because our opponent's not an ancient tomb deck. A battle cry goblin. Yeah, so this is something, a thing we can just kill next turn, and that's fine. So, I would like to play two spells this turn. Let's do that. Or three spells, even. Or four spells, even. All the spells. All right, so let's get a bio going. Let's play a reclaimer. Let's play a reclaimer. Let's play a Hierarch. And then I don't think I'm going to snuff out just yet. Alright, they didn't put a thing into play. Now I'm more inclined to snuff out. But if our opponent wants to sink some mana, I think that's fine. Let's just kill this guy now. Because this way there's not a way they can give haste to the thing coming out of the Aether Vial. If that's what they're up to. And we've got another snuff out in case we do need to kill whatever comes out of the Aether Vial. 
And then all we need to do is put a card in our, uh, land in our graveyard. And then all of a sudden we got two, three, fours. And we can have sort of one on attack, one on defense. That's pretty reasonable. With the higher up pumps, we're going to be crashing for some pretty sizable chunks. A munitions expert, you say. So they get to kill one of our hierarchs here. Do I care about that? Not particularly. That's fine. We can't do anything about it because the snuff out is non-black creatures. Gem Palm Incinerator. Can't do anything about that one either. Okay. It's like classic old school goblins. I would like to have a, a fetch that would be okay or just this milling a land would also be fine. All right. I'd like to mill a land with our underground watchery please deck. Okay, put into the graveyard. Boom. Now we've got some large boys. Um, am I just crashing with the beef? How many creatures? We've got two creatures in the bin, so this will be a 3-3. Three, three. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's cowardly to only attack with one. But our removal does come at a cost of our life, so we have to be a little bit careful. All right, Fiend Artisan. So we've got nine power in play right now. So that is a two-turn clock if our opponent's not blocking. We can't get that blocker out of the way with our removal because it's non-black creature only. But we're in a pretty reasonable place. We can also get ourselves a cradle and start doing some gross stuff with that down the line. But our opponent is a wasteland deck. So getting a cradle might not necessarily get us mana apart from the one turn we use it. All right. Four mana. Something big. A ring leader. All right. What are you going to find? They revealed some cards. Battlecry Goblin, another ringleader. Okay, they did bring in a Pyrokinesis. I don't think they're attacking with this ringleader, though. So, something to sacrifice would be nice. Oh, that's not really something to sacrifice, is it? All right, I will send in some clowns. Let's see. Just chump lock in. It's fine. Let's just keep this uh, mid-range beef train rolling. I don't think we're going to sacrifice anything to Fiend Artisan. Just having all these three power bodies is, is very good when a lot of goblins are two power and two toughness. So at the very least, we're going to be trading with what our opponent does. We're just trying to dodge Muxus. Our opponent can ringleader here. We can stop a sticker goblin if that's the thing our opponent has by killing it in response to the trigger. But all right, so here is the ringleader. Just the broadside bombardiers. Oh, and the namesake goblin. Okay. Hmm. I'm more worried about the broadside bombardier than the namesake goblin. If they get a mux into play and jam us up, sure. They could name sticker into Battlecry Goblin. That's pretty good. So if we kill this namesake goblin, that just cuts off. Okay, so they're not playing their namesake goblin, they're just playing that guy. No thank you to that guy. A goblin lackey. Okay, so we know two of our opponent's hand. Let's just kill this guy. That guy is too scary. So our opponent can't really attack now. If we attack with everything, they have to chump block one creature. But that could leave their lackey doing some pretty scary stuff. And we're only on ten. A cradle, you say? One, two, three, four. So that's seven mana. So we can get a six. A green six thing. What do we have here? don't really have anything very exciting we could just hold back on blocks for this one turn and then next turn we can create a hoof our opponent because we can go and get some dried arbors with our reclaimers at end step is that where i want to be here i have not done the math here maybe i should be doing the math but I, we can just kill our opponent next turn or we can just they can absorb some damage and we have fewer blockers so i think we've got to survive one turn and then we can just win this one we haven't seen a pyrokinesis yet out of our opponent. We did see one when they revealed it and put it to the bottom. I don't know how many they're realistically running. Somewhere between one and three, I imagine. Unlikely to be one, but it's possible. Two to three is more common. All right, we're going to see a Battlecry Goblin here. No, sorry, not Battlecry, Sticker Goblin. There it is. So we're hoping for a low roll, as always. Okay, we did get the low roll. That's not the worst for us. It means they can't play a Muxus this turn if that's the thing that they were trying to work towards. But they can still play a Battlecry Goblin and activate, which is pretty reasonable. And then we're going to have to do some maths. So there'll be 3-3, three so we can block that, we can block that, we can block that. 
And then we can just take the damage. Oh, they got another four drop. Is this going to be another ringleader? Or they got something spooky? Oh, no. That is a, a spooky one. Now they play the Battle Cry Goblin. Activate. How dead are we? I haven't done the maths, but I don't feel good about this one. That's for sure. They also get an additional friend as well in a second. Uh, so we're effectively at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're effectively at two here. I don't think we can win this one. Um, yeah, there's no way we're winning this one because of the sling gang. They just sacrifice them all and dome us. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, see, part of me wants this pick your poison, but I just don't think that's a very effective way to fight against this deck. Let's just go in as we are. Soulless Jailer doesn't affect cards coming in from the library. That's Graph Taker's Cage, so let's just go in. Um, yeah, just do some Hierarch stuff into a natural order. Usually feels like a pretty good way to run the game. Pyrokinesis is going to absolutely bust our chops. Well, our opponent's mulligan to four. Okay, so at least if they Pyrokinesis, that's going to be half of their starting resources. But it will kill like two, possibly three of our guys. So we do want to get a basic, because our opponent is a Wasteland deck. We just don't want to get caught out that way. Uh, let's play this Ignoble Hierarch. Next turn we can play a Fiend Artisan and a Noble Hierarch. That does expose us to a Pyrokinesis in a pretty scary way, but it does give us a chance to just win the game. A Goblin Lackey. Okay, that's worth keeping an opening hand on. Elvish Reclaimer. That makes Pyrokinesis a bit more difficult for our opponent to just completely wipe us, doesn't it? No, it's still going to be the same toughness, isn't it? All right, I would like to play this Elvish Reclaimer, please. And then I guess we're going to crack this. And I think we want to buy you. In case we draw our bits and pieces that we need, like snuff outs. Um, we're just playing a Fiend Artisan. Or we could go get ourselves a Dried Arbor here. And then play the Hierarch and just have all the mana. And then hope that we can just natural order our opponent for an Atraxa is probably pretty good here. It's going to be a difficult thing for them to answer. But if they do have the Pyrokinesis, they're going to have a pretty scary time. They get to take three of our permanents out. Which means they can also attack with this Goblin Lackey. So if they've got like Muxus, Red Card, Pyrokinesis, I would bet on them to win this game. How much is Crate Hoof going to be here? Five. Okay, yep, so they do have the Pyrokinesis, as I feared they might. I don't think we really have another way to play around this hand. So now, have they got the Muxus? That would be... Spicy. It's pretty spicy. Okay, so they had the, the god hand there. Um, That's pretty good. We lose all of our permanents. Uh, yeah, ask. Yeah, ask this one up. Yeah, I don't think our hand plays very well into Pyrokinesis anyway. All right, so we finished with a 3-2, which is a fine record. You know, it's not a deck I'm, I'm very adept with, and there's definitely a lot of small margins that you can eke out with this deck with experience. But let's talk about it, because I've got a few thoughts on this one. Obviously, losing to the Pyrokinesis is something that I've beaten these um, green-black decks with many times myself, so I don't think that's a problem. And then losing to the Doorkeeper Thrall deck, uh, which kind of shuts down all the things we're doing and has loads of good removal and threats, that also seems like a fine thing to just uh, chalk up a big L to. So I don't really think the losses are necessarily on me. I think it is going to be a bit awkward if they have it. In that last game, they have it, and... Boy, howdy, did they have it. So, what I will say about this particular version of this list, I'm not obviously an expert about this, but the Mesmeric Fiend didn't feel amazing. I understand why it's in there, but I think our combo matchup with this deck is going to be pretty poor anyway, so I don't really know if it's worth playing this to to do that, whereas something like a, a single Orcish Bowmasters to find, I think would just be better. Um, I like having the Endurances given the nature of the format right now. Um, yeah, like this is... A well-known deck that's very good. Obviously, we have a bunch of creatures that can get pinged down. But they're not the most essential. It's not like we're playing like a Dark Confident that we're hoping to get some cards from. You know, these are just kind of interchangeable mana dogs. If they don't kill them, then we get to like accelerate out and do some gross things. Grist is a card that always impresses me. And I'm always amazed people only run one of them. Um, I think this card is just the best thing you can do in this deck a lot of the time. Like in any fair matchup, this is like... The big hammer and i wouldn't mind seeing some additional copies just to make it more likely to find and also to have backup copies if needed um 
Yeah, not much else to say about this one. There's lots of people playing this deck. I think having two underground mortuaries and one bayou is definitely a choice that could come back to bite you sometimes. Like we did have one turn where we didn't have all the plays we could possibly make available to us in our hand because we could only fetch one untapped source. Or, you know, the other source was a dried arbor or whatever, which wouldn't be tapping. So we didn't quite get, like, completely bogged down by having these. But it's definitely a possibility that's worth thinking about. But obviously, surveilling when you're playing Elvish Reclaimer and Fiend Artisan is really good. It gives you that sort of extra little bit of punch sometimes. And card selection in a color that doesn't normally have it is nice. And sometimes it will come in and give you some grist action too. Sideboard-wise, um, we didn't get to any Soulless Jailer stuff, but this is kind of an interesting one that you don't see very often. I'd be uh, excited to see how it played out. Obviously, it played out pretty well for Testacular, who won the Legacy Challenge. So uh, I imagine they definitely got some value out of this at some point, purely because of how prevalent the graveyard decks are at the moment. Pick Your Poison is a card that continues to underwhelm me, in my experience. Like, I think it's fine in what it does. And I think it's better in these sorts of decks than it is in anything that wants to remove specific things. But again, sometimes you do want to remove specific things. And like, is this better than having an Outland Liberator in your deck? I do not think so. Being able to kill the flying creature is useful, for sure. But I think the other modes are worse than an Outland Liberator in this deck, especially when we have loads of ways of finding creatures to really utilize that. And we've even got once upon a time to dig to it. Um, so that is definitely something I consider. We didn't really have to do the combo stuff, so, you know, we, didn't, we weren't bringing in the Thought Seizers for those matchups. Force of Despair, I understand why it's there. It's not a, an amazing card, Force of Despair, but it's kind of like a necessary evil sometimes for some decks, and I feel we just kind of pushed into that one a little bit here. Uh, I understand why it's there. I don't necessarily know if you need it, but this deck won a challenge by someone who has a much better grasp of how this deck operates than I do, so I would take their advice over mine any day of the week. All right, I think we're done with this one. Uh, it's always nice to play something that's, you know, a bit, uh, bit out of my wheelhouse. I'm not really, like, a green creature deck sort of person. When I play green, it's normally for, like, tutoring lands and doing some broken-y things. So it's nice to play something that's kind of got uh, a fairer game. And there's a lot of play to this deck, and I can understand why a lot of people like it. And I hope I didn't embarrass myself too much with this one. And showed off, you know, some of the things it can do. You know, we can be a combo deck sometimes, and that is really potent. In like against the goblins when we need to race we had that angle and it was good for us and you know sometimes we have the just grinding away and messing our opponent's stuff up but i would like to see an orcish boat masters in here that's that's my one thing over the mesmeric fiend or maybe over the once upon a time if you're absolutely wedded to the mesmeric fiend all right thank you so much for watching please remember to like and subscribe it really does help the channel out and there's quite a large percentage of people who watch this channel that aren't subscribers if you could just hit that subscribe button it does really help me and push me in the algorithms i'm trying to trying to build up it'd be nice to try and hit like 5k or so by the end of the year uh, and if you help me do that i'd be really grateful all right once again thanks for watching and goodbye if you'd like to support me in the channel please check out my patreon it has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support a low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel a mid-tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed Turbo Depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.